after a long two weeks of surviving college. I know this video says Fitz is gonna try a hornworm. She is. She's gonna eat her first hornworm and I wanna see how she reacts. Before that, I have a lot of updates. So this is mainly like an update video, you know, like a catch up from two weeks, cause gosh. But if you really don't care about anything, <laughs> You know, I always leave the little time things right there you could skip to. But before that, I would definitely like to update you guys on my animals, what's been going on, the news. I have good news and I have some bad news. Yeah, so let's get into it. I wanted to give you guys another update on all of my animals. So every last one of them you're going to hear about today. First off, we have Fitz. Fitz is Fitz. Fitz is always good. She never has any problems. So we can just skip right from her. <laughs> I have a surprise pet for you guys that you haven't seen in a while. I have Sin back. So she has been doing very well with eating and everything. Michael's cousin finally got her to eat, but when she eats now, you kind of have to assist feed her. So that's how we have been feeding her. She went through about her first shed and it all came off perfectly. You know, everything was fine. It all came out at one piece. And then she did have her second shed, which was kind of a hassle. I found out my 40 gallon, well, I knew this. So her second shed that she had here was kind of like choppy. It didn't come all at once. It was definitely a hassle because my 40 gallon tank is not humid enough. You know, I try to find big tanks for my animals that I could put them in so they have a lot of room to, to roam around in, but it just seems like every time I try to do something, it gets messed up. So of course that tank isn't humid enough. So now there is a wet towel, semi-wet towel on top of it to keep most of the humidity in until I can move Sin. I want to move her into those um, shallow tub boxes, but then I don't because I just don't like the way it looks and they can't see out of it, but maybe it's better for them. And I've also upgraded her tank, so now she has a lot more to climb on and more hiding spots. But for now, we're stuck with a towel on top of it until I find a better solution or get her a different tank that doesn't have so much ventilation another thing is I am upgrading Fitz's tank in March so there's this website if you guys heard it's been on YouTube a lot it's like the a lot of pet tubers have actually advertised it it's like a four foot tank ish I don't even remember the measurements but it's freaking huge and I'm gonna buy Fitz it when they restock so that is exciting news too Fitz will be getting a tank makeover and then we got Calypso Calypso is Calypso I mean she's doing it pretty well um, I'm also planning on making a gender video of all of my pets, so literally it'll be a video where I go through every one of my pets' enclosures and try to find out the gender of them, and we're going to confirm it actually. But right now, all you guys know for sure is that Kit Kat is a girl and Fitz is a girl. But I don't think you guys know, or I even know, the actual gender of everybody else. And then we have Chimmy. He's doing great. He, she. Um, him and Mishu have been way more active. Like, it's crazy how much Mishu will now, like, float at the top of the tank and, like, stare towards this way. And how Chimichanga will be on the rock or climbing the tree in his tank. So I think that's pretty cool that they're more active now. And they definitely are less skitzy with being held. So at first, um... Not Mishu, obviously, but Chimichanga, when I first went to go pick him up, they really, he really didn't like to be held or anything like that. So now I got them in the gist of being held and not being so shy or antisocial or tank aggressive, even though that isn't the right term. But if anyone is tank aggressive in here, it's Calypso. Because ever since I started feeding Calypso crickets in his tank, He's been going nuts when I try to stick my hand in there. And then for the hermit crabs, I have revamped their tank too. I put some more decorations in there, more climbing spots for them to climb around. What I realized about them is, you know how I always said, hey guys, here are my hermit crabs, but they're molting or they're underground. And like, I never really seen them come up. And I was worried because I was like, they're all still alive every time I go to dig in there to make sure they're okay. But they're actually active at night. So I never heard of hermit crabs being nocturnal, but I believe mines are. I don't even know if hermit crabs are nocturnal. Is that a thing? I don't know. I didn't, I don't know. So literally I woke up one night, it was like one o'clock in the morning. And you know, I just go in here to check on everybody. And especially cause Calypso is nocturnal. Um, I go in there to say hi if I'm like up. I went to go see my hermit crabs 
And they're all partying, they're climbing the rocks, they're, they're swimming in the pool I got them. And my beta fish that I recently got, I haven't really announced him so much, but I have a new beta fish. It's the same one I showed in my other video. He's doing well too. He's really, sh he was really shy, but now he's getting, you know, used to everybody, especially the cat. Because even though, you know, cats are so, they, they have like a real hunting personality. Kit Kat knows her boundaries when it comes to the animals. So I could have Fitz out. And I already heard it many times you don't leave your cat around your Brito Dragon. And I really don't recommend it, but it's just my mental, you know, I know that Kit Kat won't really do much if I'm there. I know if I leave she will, but if I'm there she's not going to do anything. So when I'm sitting down with Fitz, I'm not really worried if she's next to Fitz because she knows how to act around the reptiles. And even the ones in here, she doesn't really pick on them as much as she did. She realizes that, hey, these are like your brothers and sisters, so get used to it. <laughs> and then the last is the bad news. Well, the good news is everyone's good. Everyone's good. Everything's Fine. But the bad news is I had another freak accident with my aquarium, so all of my platies have passed away. I am not getting any more fish for now. I just feel like every time I get new fish, they die within a month. And I don't know what the problem is. The water levels were a-okay. The tank was cycled. Everything was fine. So I've just come to the conclusion that the pet store has some infected fish. It's either me, and I don't know how to take care of fish, or the pet store. So my plans for that tank is I'm definitely not gonna put any fish in there anytime soon. I need to literally like relax because every time one of my fish dies, I go into a nice little mental breakdown and I just don't like seeing animals die. I try my very hardest to keep everyone alive. I cater to them. I, ca I, ca I take care of them before myself. Honestly, I put them first. It's like taking care of another life. They're depending on you to make sure they're good. So I wanna make sure that's fine. And when I feel like if, if an animal of mine dies, especially the Pac-Man frog and the rat pup, that had to be the hardest week of my life. I literally sat there with Michael and cried my eyes out. And even with fish, I still cry my eyes out with the fish because I feel like no matter what, it was my fault. But that's, I have a guilty conscience. So anyway, enough with the bad news. I'm probably gonna move the hermit crabs into that tank so I can really get that full six inch of dirt and maybe even more inches so they have more room to grow and I'm thinking about putting another leopard gecko maybe in that 20 gallon long tank and I have baby bearded dragon fever because all of my subscribers love to send me pictures of their baby bearded dragons and it literally gives me baby bearded dragon fever and I think I want another one but I don't know but I definitely think I am ready to get another animal because I do want another one. And this is a long behind update. Let's see Fitz try her first super worm. Not a super worm. Let's see Fitz try her first horn worm. Now, let me, let me just say something, okay guys? Give me a sec. The horn worm is eating a piece of oatmeal. This might be the cutest thing I've ever seen. Let me be a beauty guru real quick and maybe it'll work. Okay. So that's the hornworm eating a piece of oatmeal. I don't know why. But let me say something. Before I first got this hornworm, this lovely worm that is about to be eaten, I got the I got the hornworm and literally it was not this big. Is this hornworm alive? I've had him for a while. I've had him for like a week. Is this his head? Oh, he's still alive, but I don't know if that's his head or this his head. Is that his I don't know how a hornworm works. But regardless, when I first got this lovely hornworm, I went to the pet store and they were like, yeah, it's a mature hornworm. I was like, all right, fine. I get him and he's this small. But if that ever happens to you guys, don't worry. Just wait a week and he'll be full grown. But we're going to be feeding him to Fitz. Fitz has never seen a hornworm, ate a hornworm, so this should be very exciting. So let's get into it. All right, Fitz and the hornworm. Hi, Kit Kat. I'm kicking you out, Kit Kat. Now we wait for Fitz to realize that this is edible, which that won't take very long. Go ahead, Fitz. That's a good thumbnail. Fitz, you have strawberry on your lip. Clean up after yourself, dude. Okay, well, I don't think Fitz knows that this is edible. Why is this guy not really moving? <laughs> Move, he's just doing, he's just rolling over like a dog. Get it, Fitz. Get him.
<laughs> oh my goodness. He just shoot out something from him? What is that yellow stuff? Oh my gosh. Did Fitz just get poisoned? Fitz, hold on! I'm gonna clean you up! Okay, I wiped her off. Fitz, are you okay? Are you okay, Fitz? All right, well, 10 out of 10 for Fitz. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed that quick little update video and Fitz eating her first hornworm. I want to thank you guys a lot for your support lately because if you guys don't think I see your comments, I do. I see every last one of them and the ones who say like, oh, you influenced me to get a bearded dragon or you've helped me a lot. Like, I really appreciate that and literally that's what keeps me going. Aside from the people who want to be smart and tell me how to raise my animals, I really do appreciate you guys who support me and like keep me going. So thank you guys for that. I see your comments and literally it makes my day. There's not one day where one of your comments don't make my day 50 times better because usually I'm in college and I'm stressing out over classes, but I just go on my YouTube, read the comments, and literally it warms my heart. So I thank you guys a lot. Heart to heart right there. <laughs> I'm awkward. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.